Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back Finally back from Paris from the Brawl Stars World Finals now It's been like a couple weeks since I've made a video you guys know I've been on an insane grind and during the World Finals time We are super super busy So I'm gonna show you guys all the matches that we played not today But every video I'm gonna go round by round and show you guys ev every match every draft absolutely everything so that being said, let's hop into our first games versus AC Milan Clash and let's get into it. So the first map is Shooting Star. I'm going to quickly kind of just go through the draft and explain the process, explain the bans, explain everything that happened. If you guys aren't interested in that stuff and just want to see the gameplay, obviously you guys can just skip, uh, skip ahead. Um, but yeah, so we were given a 59% chance to beat AC Milan Clash um, just based off of like fan votes. Uh, I feel like that was pretty high. These guys are a really good team. They came number one in Brazil. And I actually thought Brazil was a very strong region and really uh, kind of, you know, undervalued and under, you know, whatever. I, I don't know exactly what the word is, but people didn't respect them enough. I feel like they were a really good region, had a lot to prove and had a lot to show. And it was really unfortunate that we had to go up against them round one. Um, so their bans were pretty simple. Usually when you have the first pick, you want to ban Brock and Max because A, Brock can break open the map. So if you have a thrower... Um, Brock kind of just counters it because you can just, you know, break the two walls on shooting and that kind of just gets rid of it. And then obviously, Max is just a really good 2-3 pick. You can go Max Gene, you can go Max Fang, just Max Bonnie. Brawlers like that that are really difficult to kill, that are really fast and kind of take away from the options of what you can first pick. So they obviously do that as well as banning Gus because Gus is just a really strong brawler to pick 2-3. And then we ban Piper because Piper is the best brawler to pick number one. We ban Tick because we think Tick is the best in the game. We ban Eve because they love playing Eve. I don't know why. Them and OG have a really weird obsession with playing Eve. Um, I didn't feel like we were going to pick it and they had a really high win rate in scrims and usage rate with it. So we just banned it because we wanted to take out one of their comfort brawlers. So they go Sprout first because no wall break, no tick and play to match the Sprout, and then no Brock. So they're going to have advantage in the mid. We went Gene and Nani uh, because Nani's kind of the best lane available right now. So we really wanted to go Nani. But the one thing that counters Nani on this map is Gene. And Gene is also just really good. So we were like, okay, that's a pretty easy 2-3 for us. Um, it felt like a little bit like we were kind of falling into their plan. I don't know exactly what they wanted us to pick. But um, I feel like the B into the Gene and the Lola into the Nani is kind of exactly what they wanted. Lola into Gene and Nani is a really good pick and then B is just really safe. So I feel like they kind of got what they wanted out of this draft. And then here, you know, there's not really a pick because we need a mid, right? There's not really a pick that can do well versus a Sprout, B, and Lola. Um, so we just ended up going with Carl because Carl, I don't know, Carl's a pretty good brawler. You can, you know, do some weird dashy stuff, spinny stuff with it. It kind of counters... Sprout, not really too much on this map, but just in general, it does counter Sprout. So I think they out comp us here by a little bit, uh, but you can definitely win with our comp. I feel like it's like a 55-45 matchup uh, where they have a little bit of an edge. Uh, but yeah, let's hop into the game and let's show you guys what happened. So going into game one, uh, I'm watching on the stream POV. I don't have this in my log, so I'm sorry that it's backwards. You're not watching from our POV. Uh, but you guys can see the Sprout, nothing else shoots over walls, and the Sprout's got all those walls. So the Sprout can just, you know, shoot Zar and, uh, you know, do a really good job of doing that. OG got his super 15 seconds into the game. So he's just going to break the wall because we have the blue star. We're able to get the blue star because the Carl can gadget up. And doing this kind of alleviates the pressure that the Sprout can, you know, kind of just clap the mid. See, what they do now because of that is they put the Sprout on the right side because you need to have walls as a Sprout. The sprout is not doing anything in the mid, and they replace the B on the right with uh, putting it in the mid. So then what we do is we put the Nani on the B and we switch. So you guys are gonna see, there's just gonna be a lot of switches going on. I'm one, but I'm able to kind of, you know, juke my way out of it. And then OG is gonna get a kill with his Nani head as Kyo Dog kills Zar. Uh, Zar. So I don't know, we're, we're kind of doing okay. Again, I think they have comp. I think it's kind of difficult a little bit for them to kill us, but I still think that they do have comp and it's really easy to just push us back. OG's doing a really good job at just hitting shots. We're all doing a really good job at just juking, communicating, playing together, stuff like that. Uh, we're kind of waiting for Zar to get a super here because Zar can just gadget and then super up. OG does kind of poop on Kyodog over there and then Zar wastes a gadget. But I mean, I guess worst case, it kind of pushes them back. So that works out. And then again, OG, really good Nani head over there. Honestly, I thought that pull missed, but I somehow hit the pull and then o or Zar with a really good grapple right there. Um, and he is going to be able to get the kill. So OG's kind of, you know, the driving force for us right now on the Nani. But I think everyone is playing really well and doing exactly what they're supposed to do here. 
Um, and right now, we're kind of just like, let's keep OG alive. I pulled the Sprout, and at this point, we're like, hey, let's just kind of keep OG alive. So myself and Zar, we're going to be his protectors over here, just not let him get hurt. Uh, we're going to be able to get the kills, and that is going to be game number one. So that was a really good game one. I think as a team, we played really well um, and kind of did everything we were supposed to. Uh, and we were just like, yeah, same thing. Same thing going into game two. Uh, let's just try and repeat what we did right there. OG, you know, he's locked in uh, with his new set of hair. Uh, and our new basketball-looking jerseys. They were pretty interesting. We got a bunch of jerseys. I'm not wearing mine. I'm wearing a Zeta jersey, an old Zeta jersey. But um, I really like our new jerseys. Mine's just in the washing machine right now. It kind of stinks a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. We got Blue Star again. They're going to switch up their strategy. They're going to put B in the mid. They're going to put the sprout onto nani but zara was just having none of that he got a super really fast i honestly don't even know how um and he just grapples right onto sprout and gets the kill and that kind of just breaks their momentum to start it off i'm gonna get a kill right there and more importantly than that kill i was able to actually break the mid wall so og you know he notices the mid wall is broken so he breaks the other mid wall and now we're up five nothing we're not even halfway into the game and both of the sprouts walls are gone so Zar again, he's going to go aggro, but he takes a little bit of damage before he's fully able to go in. So he's just going to back up. OG gets one kill by hitting a shot. He gets another kill with his return to sender. And we're looking good. We're up 9 nothing. We have pretty good positioning, and we're not panicked at all. That's something that OG gets another kill right there that we've been, you know, kind of working on is, uh, you know, playing as a team. You know, let's not get panicked whatsoever. Let's just take our time with everything. And uh, I think we did really well with that. I think AQM... Um, and they're a really good team. They're very good players. They all know that. Um, I think they put a lot of pressure on themselves by flying out like a month early. They scrimmed like six times a day. They were playing Brawl Stars nonstop. And I think it's good to train. I think it's really good to train. But I think when you're putting all that pressure on yourself, when you're saying, when you put a month's work of training all day into one match, it's just hard to, you know, not feel too pressured. Uh, so I think the pressure kind of got to them a little bit in this first round because they played a, a little bit sloppy and I don't think we did anything crazy outside of OG. You know, he was obviously hitting a ton of shots. I think we just kind of played cool, calm, and collected. And uh, that's what got us this first set one win, even though we were a little bit out comp. So let's move on to set number two and let's keep this going. So moving on to map number two, we have Bell's Rock. Very, you know, weird map. I personally think this is the worst uh, map out of them all. Uh, when it comes to knockout because you can't really switch lanes you'll see it a little bit in this game that you know it's a little bit difficult but you can't really switch lanes in this map so it's kind of like rng on what side you walk up on so they ban tick rico and sprout really good bands because all three of those are kind of just like the three best mids um and they're kind of hard to beat and we ban b because again they love b you saw them play it last map when we didn't ban it uh they just really love b so we wanted to ban b we know that they like carl so we didn't want to give them a carl last pick and then Bonnie is just a really safe 2-3 pick, so we didn't want to give them that. Now, we do know that Piper was open, but we didn't want to pick Piper because while in scrims, Piper was meta at Worlds on this map at the start. But then we came to realize that when you pick Piper, people just go jump Brock, and then they also go Nani. And it's like, how do you kill someone if they're a jump Brock and a Nani? It's like basically impossible, especially if you walk up on the Nani lane, there's just nothing you can do. So we went with the Brock one just for the flexibility of... You know, if you want to go jump, you can go jump. If you want to just spam a lane, you can spam a lane. If you want to break the walls, you can break the walls. They go Piper and Gus, which is not a bad 2-3, but I feel like when you're drafting uh, a 2-3, you don't want two brawlers that kind of get countered in the same way. Uh, this made it really easy for us to just be like, oh, this is a really easy Nani game. You know, Nani isn't necessarily that good on this map because there's some weird angles. Um, but into Piper and Gus, neither of those really counter Nani. They're not going to be taking a thrower. Uh, because of the bands that they have so they kind of just gave us a free nani game and then this is where we were stuck so everything that we could go here gets fully countered by last pick anything that we can go here gets countered by last pick so in scrims we were three and O or two and O. I forgot exactly what it was going roughs mid now roughs is like really non-conventional I think we've been like the only team that I've seen ever try it um, and, in, and I was like, yo, I mean, we've never lost with it. Let's try it. And, and the team was like, ah, you know, I don't know about that. You know, the rough smith's kind of weird, but we've never lost. And so, I don't know. We, we tried it out. We were like, okay, we'll run it. We have the only wall break. I mean, there's Piper, of course, but we have the wall break. So, we can decide if we want to open the map or not. You know, roughs can bounce. Rough has bags. You know, there's a lot of good things to roughs. 
Um, I really like their last pick when they go, and you'll see it in a second. I don't want to spoil in case some of you guys are guessing. They go Squeak. So Squeak is really good, uh, especially into Ruffs mid, into Rico mid, stuff like that. So again, I think they have comp here. Uh, the Nani lane is really good. Don't get me wrong. The Nani lane is definitely the best lane on the map. I didn't go jump Brock because just in case we wanted to open the map, I don't know. It was kind of weird. We didn't really know if we wanted to or not. You know, the, the, the thing is they just have Squeak and a dog, which makes it really hard. They also have Gus and Piper, which are really good. So again, it's kind of RNG. If the Piper walks up and he gets my lane, it's a free lane. If the Piper walks up and gets OG's lane, OG gets a free lane. And you guys can see right here, they're going to try and switch. And what Zard does is he just walks up to a range where he can pop his gadget. He's not using bags because we're facing a Squeak. And you see what happens when you try and switch on this map. Everyone kind of just gets caught in the mid. And there's nothing really you can do. So they go down. Unfortunately, OG kind of got a little bit of head ahead of himself there. And uh, kind of like ran it down. And died. But you guys are going to see that a lot in uh, in just the knockout games that we play in general. At, uh, at Worlds. You know, we do a lot of, you know, senseless things. Again, like I said in the first... Uh, shooting star set. There's a lot of things that, you know, there's, it's high pressure. There's a lot of stuff that you would do that you don't normally do. Um, it's just kind of weird. And they're slowly backing us up. Like, it's just too, a little bit difficult for us to win this because they have the squeak and the gust, which is just way better. The only reason our comp can kind of compete is because we have a Nani. Um, so it was a really difficult 2v2. They end up taking the win here. And that's going to be a pretty, you know, decisive, or decisive, not decisive, round one for them. We also wasted our dog treat, which kind of sucks, uh, but it's whatever. Again, we got our lanes right here, but if you can't, you're screwed, which you guys are going to see soon. Uh, we have them pushed back a little bit, but uh, really nice shots over there from Kayo. Kayo is a really, really good player. We almost kill Motep there with the return to center and the Brock shots. We don't get it. And Kayo, again, is going to get a nice kill. Now, low-key here, I feel like I could have 3v1 because I did get one kill and they were both two-shot. Uh, but they just took their time. They walked back. And once they fully regen, I kind of screwed myself. Um, so, you know, good round for them. They're getting all pumped up. You know, the crowd's like, boo, boo, we want STMN. No, I'm kidding. These are very nice guys. Everyone was very friendly at Worlds. But, yeah, they got that round. I think we kind of sold it a little bit, especially in that first one. But... Uh, they did get it and here you guys can see they got the lanes right this time So now I'm just laning a, a piper, you know, I get hit once I'm screwed So we try and switch but again, it's extremely difficult. It forces OG or I mean Zarda go in that corner Luckily OG makes a very high IQ play and he does get the kill on the squeak He does go down over there though, which uh, is kind of unfortunate and that makes it a 2v2 but I don't know. They don't have the squeak, so it's a little bit more winnable. I feel like Zar definitely should have gone down over there, but he doesn't, and he stays up. Really good slimy wiggles. You know, Zar was... Uh, they made him play on an iPad that wasn't the normal iPad size for him, so I feel like that would be a little bit awkward to play on, but this dude, he's just different. He is probably the most slimy player in all of North America. Ridiculous jukes by Zar. Um, and we're going to get that uh, round one right there. I feel like it was just a good round by everyone. You know, we all kind of did our part. Again, we get our lane wrong, and you guys are about to see what I'm talking about. Uh, he misses me. He thought he hit me, so he curves. OG's on the Gus, which again is a good matchup for OG, but we definitely want him on the Piper. And again, he hits me one time, so he just curves and I die. So I'm like, all right, we can't do this anymore. Um, OG and Zar, you know, they're doing what they can. OG has returned to senders, and I mean, Zar has a tree, and OG's already treated up, so I feel like this is winnable. And OG, he likes to really lock in in these, like, 3v2, 1v1 situations. He doesn't like it when you, like, try and give advice or say something because it, like, throws him off or something. Um, so I just, you know, wanted to say really quietly, like, probably save the return to sender. We still got another round. We got a treat. Um, which is something I don't normally do because OG likes to be locked in during those. Um, but, yeah, I was, I don't know. I don't know why I said that. It was kind of weird. I just, you know, I'm trying to give you guys the full rundown of everything that happened. So OG gets the hit over there on Motep, which backs him up. Kayo doesn't get the kill over there. And then we get OG on Kayo. So this is exactly what we want. And they're doing some good lane switches here too. Um, so we're just going to try and follow and do what they do with the lane switches. Again, Kayo's hitting a lot of shots, but I am treated up so he can't get the kill. OG almost gets the kill on Vitism there, uh, but he doesn't. We get a nice little teamwork kill over there. OG gets the Nani head. Gets the kill. OG was pretty good with the Nani heads. Honestly, OG usually hits like a lot of walls and stuff. Uh, but he was pretty clean with the Nani heads all tournament long. Um, so we're going to get that round. We're going to tie it up. There's Cairo's time over there. 
Um, a lot of people in the fan in, in the stands, if you guys see, you know, you can do some Where's Waldo games, see who you guys see. But we're going to tie it up 1-1 over there. And it's going to go into set, or not set, round number three. And again, we're trying to just get OG on the Piper at this point. I'm like, switch, 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 which is something we really, really try and avoid on this map. Because you guys see, every time you switch, you kind of screw yourselves. Uh, and you guys can see the switch kind of ruined it over there. It made Zar go down, but... Kyo, let me just, I don't really know exactly what happens there. Kyo tries to like two tap OG when OG very clearly has his uh, gadget up. And I think VTZM overextends a little bit. So I get a really easy um, Brock gadget on him. And then what was a 3v2 turns really quickly into a 2v1. And then we win that one right there. Um, we're pretty well set up over here. Um, I think we have no we don't have the dog. I thought we had a dog tree I don't know but Kyle's one shot anyways. OG's gonna move up the, the lane to get on the Piper side. Maybe uh, Apparently not. I think I think I go down here. I don't know. I'm getting kind of slimy over here We all oh, okay. I do go down over there and again I leave them in a 3v2 when I'm on the Piper lane you guys have probably noticed it does it does not work um, and, but when we have OG on the Nani lane, you know, or on the Piper lane, you know, it does work pretty well. Um, so again, they're kind of trapped in a corner here. They're just trying to get their supers. It doesn't matter if they get hit by the squeak or the, uh, gust. The goal was kind of just not to get hit by the Piper. The Piper does get a shot and OG again, saves his return to sender for the last round. Um, he's just trying to get a super here because if he can get a super and get a dog treat at the start of the round, he could just kill the Piper. Um, so he's trying to do what he can, uh, but unfortunately he's unable to get his super. Um, so we have our dog treat. We have our return to senders or, or one of them or whatever. They have their gust super and squeak super. So they're going to squeak super. They're going to get a hit on me over there. And here I think Zar should die, to be honest. I don't know how Zar doesn't die. I think it's, it's not exactly right here, but it's very close. I, I think right here. Zar should go down, but luckily Kyle shoots the wall. Uh, OG uses Nani head. Zar gets pushed to one shot. Batism is one shot. I use my Brock super kind of open up the map. And at this point, I think OG is kind of just in a very good spot to kind of just be that guy. We put him on the Piper. He's powered up Nani. He's got the return to sender. And OG he was just a killer on the Nani um, the entire time. So he gets a kill over there. He almost goes down, goes to 98 HP. Zar gets the kill. Kyle's one. It's kind of, you know, a hectic whatever is going on but we do end up getting the kill which gives us the set win and that is going to be set number two up 2-0 for us so a really good start let's move on to map number three and show you guys what happened there so the next map we have for you guys is super beach you guys can see you know the trees you know the the blankets the sand the towels whatever it is uh we got the beach vibe so um they're gonna have first pick we're gonna have second pick here i really think second pick is a really really large advantage on this map there are some maps where I think you just got to take, I don't, I don't know, it's weird. It's just there's some maps where I think first pick is so good. And then there are some, some maps where I also think it is like second pick is just kind of unbeatable. I don't think it's unbeatable here. And they definitely had the first right or the right first pick going Gale. Um, but I don't know. Last pick's just kind of hard to beat on this map. So we're going to go Buster 2-3 with Otis. The reason we did that is, again, we wanted to go Gale mid and then Otis lane and then have Buster or Ash last pick, but they were smart. They took the Gale first. Uh, they probably saw that we run a lot of tanks here on like Brawl stats, whatever uh, analyst stuff they have. But we took the Otis because we think that's the strongest lane. And then we took the Buster because Buster is busted. See what I did there. Um, even though they do have a Gale, which is the best anti-tank you can have on the map. We were like, you know what? Buster is good anyways. Let's just go it. Um, and they're going to go Spike. So at the time we thought, you know, this is a weird pick to be honest. At the time, uh, and Tribe EU also picked it on this map at MSI, and there I was also like, this is a really weird pick, but the spike holds it down really well, which is really surprising. The spike really, really holds it down. Uh, it's actually a really good pick. We're definitely going to be going it more. Um, we try and take away as much as we can from these other regions, and the spike, I don't know, the spike's just really good here. Um, their bans are kind of simple. They just ban Squeak and Barley for the last pick. And they banned Surge, which is really weird because we really never go Surge here. We have a couple times in scrims, but this is not a map where we're really comfortable playing Surge. And we know that AQM really likes to play Surge. So it was something that we were considering banning. I think we had uh, Surge as a listed ban if we had picks 2-3. So maybe that's why they banned it because uh, they thought it was strong as a 2-3 pick. Uh, and then our bans are really simple. 
Um, they are comfortable with Penny, so we ban Penny. They're really comfortable with B, and we don't want anti-tanks on the map, so we ban B. And then same thing with Dog. We just didn't want to give them the Dog. We're trying to run it down. Um, so you guys can see, we didn't really get exactly what we wanted with um, like Buster, Gale, Max, Otis, you know, type of combo. But we did get Poco, Otis, Buster, so kind of like a hybrid of what we wanted to go. So I like our comp a lot more here. I think this is the only time where we had comp in the... Uh, in this match and you guys can see i'm gonna be against the spike here this is a tough lane i tied at the start but that is a really tough lane motep played it really well um we're gonna have otis on lane we think otis is just like the best lane here i think that's kind of just a given that otis is really good and then we have poco but we don't have the normal poco setup we have the anti i don't know what it's called we call it anti stun poco where basically you pop your gadget and loose supers don't affect, you know, some stuff don't affect in this game. In this case, spike supers and gale stuns will not, the gale stuns won't stun you if you pop it properly. Now, it is really hard to time, and to be honest, um, our team isn't the best at Poco. Myself and Sans are pretty good, but um, I wouldn't say we're like main Pocos or amazing Pocos. And Zara and OG also, you know, not really playing too much Poco. So it was kind of weird to see Zara end up on Poco. Definitely not a brawler you think of Zar playing but I think he played it really well uh OG's doing his thing on the Otis I'm doing my thing on the Buster we have him really well backed up over here if we use the Poco gadget there I think we score but again it's just such a timing thing and it's so hard to do um I don't know I did it in a scrim like two days before this or something it's just so hard to pull off we get the ball out of the corner and we get it to OG but unfortunately you know there's just too much going on for OG to score um, but at least we get the ball to the corner. We kind of get reset, but they do get positioning off of that. Um, the only time you can really switch on this map as well is by dying or if you kill them. So we got the lane switch down, uh, when myself and OG both died. We're like, okay, let's switch this up over here. I'm calling for Zara that I'm going to need a, uh, anti whatever thing. I don't know exactly what it's called. He gets one onto me. Really good timing. We're going to be able to get the kill over there on the gale. And I'm just going to push up. I'm not going to shoot or do anything. But just the presence of me being in that bush is enough. Um, I also do have my super. I've been pretty patient with it. Waiting for a good time to use it. Um, but yeah, we're going to push up over here. Zara is a super. So he's going to get them really low. Again, gale has that thing. I don't even know what it's called. So Zara, again, really good use of the gadget. He's going to get... Uh, well, I'm going to get the kill, but he's going to help get that kill with the gadget. And we're in a pretty good spot here. I think I overextend a little bit thinking my team is going to come up with me. Um, I am able to make it out. And then OG and Zara are going to be able to get the kill on the spike. So things are looking good right now. We definitely don't have comp in overtime. Um, considering they have a Gale to corner the ball, which is really good. A spike and a max. And then we have a tank. In a poco so i mean once it hits overtime it's not really the best for us uh but you can still make it work for sure it's not like it's impossible to win um it was kind of weird because it felt like they were just trying to get the ball in the corner uh even though they had comp when we and we were you know trying to be the aggressor uh which is kind of weird but i mean i don't know like here they're pretty low but i feel like they got to try and make their way up the map kyle's doing his best but og does get a kill on them, so i can see why they want to corner the ball it's a little bit difficult for myself and Zara versus the Spike and Max. But again, OG's doing a really good job at just winning. Um, so he's doing really good. We're, our number one goal is to not let VTism get to the ball so he can super. We managed to kill him fast. I get my super. Timeout. Timeout. Before we, get, before we watch this again, timeout. I got to get this timing. One sec, guys. It's kind of hard to see here, I guess, because I can't full screen. But the right side of the net is wide open it is wide open there are like four tiles there to choose from you can also go in the middle where you see there's like maybe two in between motep and kyle og puts the ball perfectly in the corner to the left of motep i have no clue why he shot the ball there that is probably the worst spot you could have put the ball but it still went in the net. It was a really good shot. It was a really good play. In my books, it was the best play for day one, 100%. So, you know, nice goal, OG. Maybe he did it for the dramatics. I don't know. Um, but, you know, really nice goal scored there. Really good job by, you know, the whole team. Just staying composed, doing what we're supposed to do in overtime and getting the goal. Um, and I feel like they kind of lose their composure a little bit here. Kyle goes down really quickly. 
were able to push up and score in like 20 seconds. So, I mean, that's pretty fast when we're supposed to be the ones, you know, kind of taking our time a little bit, uh, considering we have a Poco comp. But, I mean, I don't know. I feel like they kind of lost their control a little bit being down this much, which makes sense. It's hard to play at Worlds. It's a very high-pressure situation, uh, and it's hard to do. Um, OG pushes up a little bit too aggressive there. Motep kind of just sneaks out of the bush and kills him. Uh, and then I get Gale blowed. Motep does a really good job on that left side. Kyle, you know, slides it into the net. And that's going to be a goal for them. So, I mean, good bounce back for them for sure. Uh, Vitizum is really close to super. Zara gets low a little bit quick. But as I said before, this guy is just slimy. I'm going to pop my super. Again, no skill. I just walk in a straight line. Um, and they have Gale, so it's a little bit scary. Because they can corner the ball. Vitisum gets the ball. Tries to corner. Um, picks up the ball. And auto aims it back to me. Um, a little, It's a little bit of an embarrassing play. To be honest. But as like a player. If you've been in that situation before. You know like it's weird. Putting the tornado down. Bouncing the ball. Trying to shoot. Like there's just a lot going on. So I can definitely see why I made that mis mistake. I mean it is what it is. Uh, but yeah. That's going to be it. So we ended up winning 6-1. Sweeping um, the SA1 seed. Um, again, I've said it to them. Uh, I've said it on Twitter, but I just want to say, you know, GG's to them. They're a really good team. Um, I don't know if scared was the right word, uh, but they were a really difficult round one. People thought this was going to be like the most even round one uh, along with Tribe and Navi. Um, and we were really preparing for these guys as they are a very good team. The coach is a really good coach. Everyone on this team, you know, just in the organization is really good. Um, this win did feel a little bit special though, um, a little bit of an easter egg that you guys may not know, that no one really knows. We actually called with AQM, uh, before we signed with Stamina at the start of the year, and, um, when we told them how much money we wanted and what we were trying to get paid and stuff like that, uh, apparently they laughed at us with the other org owners. Um, so, you know, being the, uh, we, we ended up getting the most earnings out of every team not named Zeta in the entire world. So, and we swept them. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, like a uh, laughing back moment at them. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be it for the first match and for my first video back. Hopefully tomorrow, you know, it's my sleep schedule is really messed up. And, you know, I also do have an editor with, with a real human schedule. So hopefully tomorrow... Uh, we can get the next video out versus TQ, which was, whoo, that one was wild. Uh, but if not, expect it the next day. It's going to be it for me today. Again, thank you guys for watching. We have received so much support, and we always receive so much support every time we go to these international events. So no matter where you're from, what region, all of that, you know, thank you guys very much for supporting us and all that you guys do for us. We do appreciate it a lot, and that's going to be it for us today. So I'll catch you guys again later. Peace. Hey, you. Yes, you there watching this on your phone. Have you ever wanted to be the best, the most handsome, the most loved player on your team, and support your favorite creator at the same time? Well I have good news. You can be all of that and more, by using code Bobby. But you have to do it now because this is a limited time offer. Use code Bobby at any Supercell Games store.